Hello students, I am your biology teacher Minakshi and today we shall start with the class 9 biology syllabus. The topics that we are going to discuss today are the definition of the cell, what are the characteristics of the cell, about the discovery of the cell and the cell theory. To begin with, let us start with the definition of the cell. A cell is defined as the structural and functional unit of living organisms. So, since here we need to put stress on two words, the structural unit and the functional unit. All living organisms are of two types, unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms. Unicellular organisms are composed of a single cell, but multicellular organisms are an aggregate of cells. Here we can compare this with the example of a building. A building is a collection of rooms and rooms are collection of walls. But what about a wall? A wall is a collection of bricks. So overall, if we think about the smallest part of which a building is made up of, it is a brick. In the same way, specifically when we talk about multicellular organisms, the smallest living structures of which they are made up of is a cell. That is why cell is called the structural unit of life. Now the second aspect, functional unit. Students, all living organisms perform certain basic functions of life which we call life processes like nutrition, respiration, excretion and transportation of substances from one part to another. Now if we think about a single cell, a single cell respires, a single cell excretes and transportation of substances are going on within a single cell. That is why the cell is called the functional unit of life. Now the branch of biology under which the cell structure is studied is called cell biology. Now the next topic is characteristics of the cell. Students, a cell has basically five characteristics. Number one, cells are the building blocks of plants and animals. It means all living organisms are made up of cells and specifically just now we have discussed multicellular organisms are aggregate of cells that, we, that is why we say that cells are the building blocks of plants and animals. The second characteristic is it is capable of independent existence. It means if all the essential requirements are provided to a single cell, it may stay alive. Third characteristic is it performs all the basic functions of life. So it's just now we have discussed that a cell performs all the basic functions of life which we call life processes like excretion, nutrition, transportation of materials from one part of the part of the cell to another. Fourth characteristic, every organism start its life as a single cell, whether it is a unicellular organism or multicellular organism, whether it is asexually reproducing organism or sexually reproducing organism. And the fifth characteristic is each cell has its own lifespan. Students so here the word lifespan means the period of time for which any living entity remains functional. For example, the lifespan of red blood corpuscles is about 120 days. The lifespan of white blood corpuscles is about 15 to 20 days. The next topic is discovery of cell. As you must be, not, must be knowing, the cell was discovered by Robert Hooke in the year 1665. He took very thin slices of cork and he examined these slices of cork under his self-designed microscope whose magnification power was not very high. Students, cork is obtained from the bark of the tree and cork is a tissues, tissue whose cells are dead. So when he observed these thin slices of cork under his self-designed microscope, he could see many number of 
boxes very small boxes under the microscope just like a honeycomb like structure after looking at these structures he called these small compartment as cells actually the word cell is derived from the latin word cellula which means little room the next topic is cell theory cell theory was collectively formulated by two german scientist out of which one was german botanist his name is m j sheldon and the other is german zoologist t schon they formulated this theory in the year 1839 after few years in the year 1885 German physiologist Rudolf Virchow gave the phrase omnis cellula e cellula which means cells arise from pre existing cells now what does it mean it means that when a living cell will divide it will give rise to new cells it means all the new cells that are being made are made from a cell that is already existing in nature now the next topic is the postulates or the salient features of cell theory there are four salient features or four postulates of cell theory the first postulate is cell is the basic unit of structure of all plants and animals as we have been discussing from the beginning of this video that all living organisms are made up of cells that is why it is the basic unit of structure second postulate is cell is the basic unit of function of living organisms now we know very well that all the life processes are also going on within a single cell that is why it is the basic unit of function of living organisms the third postulate is cell is the unit of heredity as it contains hereditary material inside the nucleus now what is the hereditary material inside the nucleus it is dna that is deoxy ribo nucleic acid now students when a cell divides and give rise to new cells some part of this hereditary material is transferred to the new cell it means the characteristics pass on from one cell to another and this hereditary material is present inside the nucleus that is why the cell is called the unit of heredity and the fourth postulate which was added by rudolf virchow is cells arise from pre existing cells it means when a living cell divides it will give rise to new cells it means from where the new cells have been made they are made from a cell that is already existing in nature rest we shall be discussing in our coming videos thank you very much